So, before it gets later. Wait! Uh, tools, 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 tools. Uh -huh. Script, reset, start. Okay, close. Um, what the hell is I should be trying to? I think it was something like um, trying to try. Should I try anything in particular? I think not. Sh should I try an anything in particular? Uh, anyways, let me let me try to get the key. Users, no. About yeah, basically that. Um, what 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 else? Uh, I don't I don't really. I, I, yeah, I don't really have that much more to do. I mean. I wouldn't, uh, I could try to go for something like, um, uh, tweet, maybe, just in case, I guess, I don't really know, I don't believe it is that necessary, but, maybe, um, for the sake of showing that I am doing it, I, I don't know, I mean, maybe, maybe it isn't even necessary to do it, but anyways, let me take the screenshots, uh, Aha, uh -huh. we are losing our throats today. This is quite a big one to me. Uh, beep, 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 beep. The fuck? The, here. It's, yeah. Oh. I mean, it is more common to see that nothing really happens when I am literally into starting screen so yeah not that much more to really what wait what uh give, give me a second which microphone i am using here ah wait it is it is kind of dying this one uh wait 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 wait, wait. microphone okay there it is um i don't know why the png no b2 Decided to not utilize the proper microphone. I don't know. But since I found that, let me try to do something like this. Uh -huh. uh, something like that live uh, live 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 like Ali live live feed live uh, live live and maybe it is the same live this this morning this was Ruto what what is Ruto a man what anyways I think I'm not forgetting anything, you know, just in case. Uh, 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 spelling. Minor uh, spelling. That fucking uh, uh, Okay, post. uh, 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 this is, this should be properly set up. No, 
What? Ah, I, I, I closed this. That, that's why it, it wasn't set up. So it is, I, I closed the... Uh, not the browser, the... Um, what was it? The... What's the... Uh, my God, I can't remember. <laughs> oh yes, I close, oh yes. So yeah, there it is, there we have it set up. And well, I, I guess I want some some water or something like that. Um, I mean, um, I, I, I hope I don't have to get it, but in reality, yeah, I'm going this kind of fuck, so, um, okay. I will, I will try to get that, and we probably are going to be here sitting some, some time while I get uh, water, or after I get water, so yeah, they give me a second. Also, why the fuck can I... Uh, I, I think it happens that if I am not talking directly into the microphone, it doesn't really pick up, I will guess, I don't know. Okay, anyways, give me a minute, I need... Uh, oh, it's microphone, 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 hello, hello, microphone, microphone, microphone. Wait, wait, uh, why isn't it working, my man? Wait, let me, let me get a little bit closer. Um, do we have it working? Do we have the microphone working? Or, okay, it, it, it seems it is fine. Uh, at least on OBS. Let me now check the audio. Pe -pe 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 -pe. Um, how is it working? How is this? Uh, why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> I hate to, to hear that. I, I, I sound so incredibly different in, in some cases. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. We we have audio. We have something at the very least. So. Anyways, here we are. Um, with that said, basically, <coughs> I think, yeah, I don't have that much more to do, but I think, so. <sighs> um, well, we have like a minute and something to, to wait. We could try to wait. I 
I mean, I will probably run out of things to say. <laughs> based, based on the consideration that I... Yeah, yeah. Let, let's simply start, yeah. Let's simply start. Um, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, <laughs> hello, 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 everybody. Where, once again. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, uh, hello, everybody. Where, once again, here. Uh, getting together for our next for our next session of reading for another beautiful location in which we are going to explore we are going to see and we are going to try and find something out of this particular book the Mahabharata as it is important to see and to learn the lessons that it might contain the last uh, session let's say we earned some very valuable knowledge it was truly interesting and amazing to see how many things were contained and how much it was possible to to be analyzed so yeah in this new study session i guess we're going to keep trying to find even more similar things to this one and we're with that in mind going to probably set our goal on trying basically to simply go there and realize some beautiful action about reading and well i guess um in the last session we had a very as always <laughs> we had a very fun time it was very interesting and i cannot even try to negate the reality of it being truly truly nice i will say um i i don't really think that so in, yeah, sometimes it happens that the book itself doesn't really contain that much lessons in some particular areas. But when it decides to give something, it isn't so short with the amount of knowledge that it provides. Rather, kind of the opposite. It decides to barricade you with loads and loads of content. So yeah, it is truly, truly nice to see it happening, I will say. And even more, truly enjoyable. So, well, basically, we are going to keep reading a little bit more of the beautiful Mahabharata, as it is in the best of our interest that we have to try and find even more of that knowledge that gives us so much. And, well, I think I, I shouldn't really have that much, um, that much more things uh, to preoccupy myself with. Let me, uh, let me see. Eh, uh, yeah. Now, probably transition into this. And what I was saying, basically, this scene in particular, where we are reading, continuing, perseverating with our efforts on the book. I, I, I know what I forgot to do, and that is to properly set up the chat. Give me, give me a second. <laughs> give, me a, give me a second, please. Thank you. Uh, let me put it over here, I think, okay, there we have it. Now we are completely perfect to, to continue with our endeavor about reading the, um, the Mahabharata. I, what, where was it that we left? Uh, ah, yeah, we left on the interesting part of seeing what going to happen. <laughs> Basically, the whole ritual that Yudhisthira was realizing um, culminated with some people getting angry because those who know the who know less not the least but at the very base at the very least know less about the vedas and the vedangas don't really understand who krishna is so because somebody got angry about krishna being the one who was the first um Akiya, i think it was called as in basically the first um fruits of the whole Sarpayuga Yagna getting or being was was what Krishna being the one who got it first somebody who is in no real sense a mortal but is on, on this particular realm or the realm of the um, humans a mortal because somebody got angry with that and they decided to go against what um, Pandavas were deciding. Um, I will say probably in a very quickly escalated manner. 
they decided to go to war and now we are uh, going to see how all of this new story unravels i will guess that i, I mean i didn't even need to to try and guess who it was the, it, it was here sisupala <laughs> sisupala was the one who got angry about being krishna the one who got the few uh, tributes of that sacrifice so yeah sisupala started to organize a whole assembly of those kings that do not properly understand the vedas to try and go against the, the pandavas because they are doing something that to their eyes seems to not to be justified so yeah basically we're going to explore what is it that happens after this um last last thing that we read about basically they are preparing. We do not know if it is really going to happen or not. We simply know that people is getting ready for something. Maybe they are going to avoid war. Maybe not. We we have to see that. So yeah, let me give, give me give me a second. Uh, hello, Rivera. Welcome, welcome, Rivera. I, in a in a pro, in a more proper manner. Who we want to be called? River, River, Pecan, Pecan. I never thought about it, but now that I I think. I find myself having some questions about how to properly say your name. But anyways, uh, hello. We are so far doing very nice. Um, enjoying the reading of the Mahabharata. And uh, well, getting ready to, to start. So yeah, I hope, just in case, that you're uh, well. I, without saying too much, I hope you can um, continue with your efforts on whatever it is that you're trying. Pekan. Okay, 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 okay. Fine, fine, fine. Then Pekan, I hope you you can be fine with whatever it is that you're trying on your life nowadays. And well, um, with that, I hope if you wish to remain that we can find something interesting on this the beautiful Mahabharata. So, with that being said, let us properly also start on this um, marker. The the what what the fuck? The, I I almost read somebody called marker. <laughs> um, there it is now properly with the um, starting marker made we can continue with this <coughs> Canto 39 the supala vadha eh? better man very very fine then um, <laughs> simulate a scissors moshe simulate how will you simulate a scissors moshe my man what anyways um <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, as I was saying, Canto 39, also sorry, uh, welcome to Kadri, sorry for not saying it. Uh, my Sampayana said, seeing that great assembly of kings agitated with rats, like the tremendous ocean by the winds that blow during the Paralaya, the universal dissolution, Yudhisthira says to the age Bhishma, most intelligent of men and grandsire of the gurus, even like Puruhuta Indra, a slayer of foes of boundless energy, addressing Brihaspati. This vast sea of kings is steered by the rats. Tell me, Pitama, what shall I do that my sacrifice is not obstructed and my people are not harmed? When Yudhisthira, knower of Dharma, says this, Bhishma, the Guru Grandsire, replies, Fear not, Guru Viagra. Can't the dog kill the lion? I know of a solution which is both peaceable and easy. These lords of the earth are barking all together, even as a pack of dogs does at a sleeping lion. My child, truly like dogs at the lion, these are barks in anger at a sleeping Brishni lion. Yes, Krishna now is like a lion that is asleep until he wakes. This lord of the cherries, this bull among men, makes these kings seem like lions. My child, best of all kings, this is Upala of little wit wants to carry these kings with him. Through the very will of him that is the soul of the universe, to Yama's realm. My man, he's going to kill them? Oh my god, surely. O oh, Bharata, Vishnu wants to take back into himself the life that dwells in Sisupala. Wisest of men, 
O Gangeya, the intelligence of this evil king of the Chedis, as also of all the Kshatriyas, has become perverted. Why, all these kings' minds have become as perverse as that of the Chedi. Yudhishthira, Krishna is the progenitor, as also the destroyer of all created beings, of the four species which exist in the three worlds. O oh, Bharata, when Sesupala hears Bhishma, he retorts roughly, rudely. I will guess. Yeah, I, I can't really get if they are going to war or not. I mean, it seems kind of weird to, to notice that they have the possibility of trying to do so, and yet they decide to not act on that desire, I will say. But a proper idea or something that appears on my mind, trying to talk about it is probably they are designed to not go to war as in a sense if Yistira was already shown to be a very a proper man, a very polite man, man sorry, and because of that same reason he wouldn't have any particular motive to try and destroy what he has created with the rest of, yeah, with the group that is the whole assembly of kings that was present there. So. I will guess they are trying to avoid it as much as they can, trying to conciliate before really saying that it is necessary to go into war, I guess. But yeah, it, it doesn't really sound like any any one of the sides is going to take action. Now, uh, let me drink some water because my I don't know what is going on with my throat. So. No, I'm kind of. I, I don't know. I, it seems like no. My my throat is uh, already there. I guess. Anyways, <coughs> Canto forty. Si supala badka para va continue. Si supala says, "Old and infamous wretch of your race, are you not ashamed of trying to frighten these kings with these false terrors?" You are the foremost of the gurus, and living as you do in the third state of celibacy, does it become you to give a counsel like this, which is so far removed from dharma? Like one boat tied to another, or the blind following the blind, are the gurus who have you for their guide. More than once you have pained us by eulogizing the deeds of this Krishna, the slaying of Putana and all the rest. You are arrogant and ignorant, always praising this Yadava. Why does your tongue not split into a hundred parts? How can you, who have such superior Gyana, want to extol this cowboy whom even men of little intelligence might berate? If in his childhood Krishna did kill a vulture, O oh Bhishma, what was so remarkable in thus? Or in his slaying later of Aswa and Brishabha, both of whom were untortured in battle? What is so wonderful in his bringing down a wooden cart with a kick? Bhishma, what is so remarkable in his holding Govar Govardhana, which is like an altil, a loft for a week? While he spotted uh, upon a mountain, he ate a vast quantity of food. Listening to this word of yours, many have wondered. But, oh, you who knows Dharma, it is not still more of a crime that Krishna killed the great one, Kamsa, whose food it was that he ate? Ah, base guru, you do not know karma. Have you never heard from sages who spoke to you the very things which I will now tell you? The wise and virtues always teach the honest that weapons must never be made to use against women, cows and brahmanas, nor against those whose food one has eaten or whose shelter one has enjoyed. Bhishma, it seems you have cast away all these teachings. Infamous Guru, in your desire to praise Krishna, you say to me, to me that he is grand and has the highest knowledge and age, as if I know nothing at all. If at your word, O Bhishma, he who has killed a woman, Putana, must be worshipped, then what will become of this great teaching? How can anyone like Krishna deserve such praise, Bhishma? This one is the foremost of all wise men. He is the lord of the universe. Han 
Sanardana listens to what you say and he believes it all to be true. Well, surely it, they are lies. The words of phrase which Abadhi, a chanter, sings leave no impression upon him. However, often he croons them. Every creature acts according to his nature, even like the bullingad beard, which forever preaches against rashness and then picks shreds of meat from between the lion's teeth. Your nature is low, Bhishma. It is mean. There is no doubt about it. So, too, it seems that the Pandavas, who consider Krishna as deserving of worship, who have your you for tormentor, are also sinners by nature. Knowing Dharma as you do, you have still fallen away from the way of the wise, and so you are sinful. Who, Bhishma, knowing himself to be virtuous and superior in knowledge, will do what you have done from motives of gain? If you know Dharma's way, if your mind is guided by Dharma, then be you blessed. But then, why, Bhishma, did you carry the chaste Amba, who had already given her heart to another, forcibly from her Swayambara? If you are so full of virtue and wisdom, although your br brought what? Although you brought her forcibly, your honest and virtuous brother, Bichitraviria, did not marry her when he knew her condition. You boast of Dharma, yet under your very eye, were sons not begotten upon your dead brother's wife by another? True, in accordance with Dharma. Where, O oh Bhishma, is your own Dharma? I say that this great celibacy of yours, the brahmacharya that you observe either from foolishness or impotence, is in vain. O oh, Bhishma of Dharma, I do not see your well-being. You who preach virtue have never, as I see it, served the old, your ancestors. Welcome, Klondike. Hey, welcome, welcome. We are um, continuing a little bit more with uh, Mahabharata, or, well, reading simply, uh, and showing some Mahabharata readings. So, welcome. I hope you're fine, and um, yes, as always, um, <laughs> have, have a nice stay. Now, let me, uh, what did I left over here? Worship, charity, scriptural study, sacrifices distinguished by generous gifts to Brahmanas. All these together do not amount to a sixteenth part of the punya a man obtains by having a son. The punya acquired by fast and balls beyond count are all fruitless to him who has no child. You are childless and old, and the dharma you preach is false. Like the swan in the story, you will not die at the hands of your own kinsmen. Other men of knowledge have of all told this tale. I will not relate, in, relate it in full for you to hear. Of your utter lived a swan in the sea coast. He always preached Dharma to his fetter clan, while not following Dharma in his life, practiced Dharma an absurd sin. This what what all the other honest beards constantly heard him preach, and I have heard that the other spirit that reigns the sea brought him food for the sake of Dharma. O oh, Bhishma, all those other sea beards left their eggs with him and dived among the waves, and the sinful old swan will eat the eggs with which those other foolish avians trusted him. After a while, when the eggs dis decreased alarmingly, another wise beard became suspicious and one day actually saw what the old swan did. Having witnessed the old swan's crime, the other beard spoke in great sorrow to his fellow's beards. Then all the other beards also saw the other swan at his scene, and they descended on the evil wretch and killed him. Your conduct, Bhishma, is just like the old swans, and these kings of the earth might kill you in anger, even as the other beards did the sinful old swan. Men who know the Puranas have an old saying about the swan and Baharata. O oh, you that support yourself on your wings, through your heart is driven by lust, yet you preach the Dharma, but this your sin of eating the eggs transgresses what you preach. I wouldn't really have a possibility of mm, knowing if what Purusala is trying to do. I will guess that he is trying in some way to 
adhere to the Dharma, taking into account that he is mentioning so much the importance of um, Dharma, but at the same time, Sisupala seems to be kind of lost in the way. Mm, I guess a good way to analyze it would be the lack of context will end up making anybody get confused when in reality there is no reason to lose ourselves in the way of learning about anything, but rather to enjoy, to, I wouldn't say simply to consume, rather to be there and to have the capacity of properly um, intaking all the lessons that are presented to us by those who are of a higher order, I would say, is important, while at the same time having the capacity of not being affected by your own thinkings, in a sense in which it sadly happens that we believe we are better than others, not because we really are, but rather because we only mm, we only want to be safe, and by wanting to be safe, it is that when I'm confusing the thing that we do not know with the danger that preaches in the dark, I would say. So, as, well, I mean, uh, a little bit of more of an explanation, because both of those concepts are still based on the unknown. If there was no darkness, you wouldn't have something to fear, because you will know that everything that exists under the um, light of the sun or the, the light that eradicates the darkness is something that you can see and something that you can make sense of. But if you are observing something in the darkness and you can't even mm, properly put a name into that thing, in that moment it represents or becomes rather a threat for you. Maybe not the biggest one, but rather one that is sufficiently dangerous enough so that you will need to worry about it. And by observing that you have a necessity over properly recognizing how much of a real threat things are or not also, it is that you gain the capacity of moving over. And also being humble enough might give the chance of not falling in such a trap as this one. Because I will say, Sisupala might as well not be acting out of um, hate only for um, uh, the Pandavas, but rather from the desire of giving them something real with which they can somehow try to defend themselves, I will argue. So, yeah, I don't think it is uh, that bad. Rather, the simple desire to make, as I said before, sense out of the reality in which we live end up driving us to take um, appreciated measurements against things um, Unproportionate, so unproportionate measures against things that are not really that negative. So yeah, I think that is a proper explanation about it, or one of the few thousands that are about this text in general. But yeah, I mean, very, very nice, very, very, very nice. So hey, well, let, let me drink some water, and after that we continue with Canto for the one. Anyways, uh, Canto 41, Sisupala Vadha Parva continue. Sisupala says that mighty king Harasantha, who had no wish ever to fight Krishna, says he is a slave, deserved my deepest esteem. Who can command what Kesava, Bhima and Arjuna with him, did when they killed Harasantha, entering through the unlawful gate? Disguised as a Brahmana, thus Krishna spied on the might of King Harasantha, and when that great sovereign first offered his wretch Patya to wash his feet, only then did he confess to not being a Brahmana, apparently from motives of Dharma. When Harasantha, O Guru, asked Bhima and Arjuna to take Patya, it was Krishna who refused for them. If this fellow is lord of the universe, as this other fool says he is, why does he disclaim being Abrahamana? 
Ah, I am so surprised that while you lead the Pandavas astray from the path of the wise, they regard you as being honest, or perhaps it is hardly surprising from those who have you. O oh, Bhishma, woman is in nature, bent with age, for their main counselor in all things. Hearing this, Sisupala's words, harsh both in important sound, Bhimasena, mightiest of strong men, of terrific energy, becomes enraged, his eyes, large and expanded, like lotus leaves, dilate still more. They grow red as copper. Upon his brow, the assembled kings see three deep furrows, even like the Ganga of three paths upon the mountain of three peaks. When Bimasena begins to grind his teeth in rage, the kings see that his face resembles that of Yama himself at the end of the yuga, ready to devour every creature, just as that furious Kshatriya is about to spring up. Bhishma Mahabajo catches hold of him, even like Mahadeva seizing Mahasena, the divine Senapati. O oh, Bharata, Bhishma, Pitamaha of the Gurus, quickly pacifies the raging Bhima with different kinds of gentle counsel. Bhima Parantapa cannot disobey Bhishma, even as the ocean can never break its shores, not during the monsoon. However, Rahan. Even while Bhima reaches the bold Sisupala, depending just on his own manliness, does not tremble or grow afraid. Though Bhima leaps up every second moment in fury, Sisupala does not bestow a thought on him, just as a lion pays no heed to a small animal which is angry. Seeing the dreadful Bhima in such frenzy, the powerful king of Chedi says with a laugh, let him go. Oh, Bhishma, let all these kings watch me burn him with my prowess like a moth in a fire. Hearing this from the Chedi king, Bhishma, Kurustama, best of all wise men, speak thus to Bhima. My man, this is... <laughs> somebody is going to die here. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. I, 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 am, I am pretty sure somebody is going to die here. <laughs> Man, man. Ah, very, very, very wonderful so far. But I, I will guess what, what can be extracted is how pushy can somebody be when they believe what they are doing is the correct thing for the sake of trying to make it be apparent that they are trying to do the correct thing, even if they are not aware about how they act, as it represents that one truly has such a conviction behind their actions that they will be, I don't know if ready or not to die, but rather ready to train and fight even the most dangerous of the men for the sake of trying to prove what this person is saying as something that can be mm, believed to be real, or at the very least more real than the argument of the other side, because he, this person sorry, also believes that they have the capacity enough to defeat, even as I said before, the most dangerous man, in a sense. So yeah, um, Canto 42, Sisupala Vadha Parva continue. Bhishma says, this Sisupala was born in the land of the kings of Chedi. He was born with three eyes and four arms. As soon as he was born, he screamed and brayed like a little donkey. His father and mother and all his kinsfolk were terrified. Seeing the extraordinary child and these ominous signs, his parents decided to abandon him. But then Anasariri, a disembodied voice, spoke to the king, his wife, their ministers and their priests, who stood stricken with anxiety. O oh, king, this son of yours will be both fortunate and of superior strength. You have nothing to fear from him. Indeed, cherish him, nurture him without fear. His time has not come and he will not die yet. Besides, the one who will kill him with a weapon has also been born. When the mother heard this, she cried anxiously to the invisible being. I bow with folded hands to him that spoke these words. Be he a lofty god or any other, let him tell me one more thing. I want to know who will be my son's killer. The invisible, the invisible one then said. When this child is placed upon the lap of his killer to be, his superfluous arms will fall onto the ground like a pair of five headed snakes, and his third eye on his forehead will vanish tracelessly. 
when the kings of the earth heard about the child Tills three eyes and four arms, and what the unseen being had said about him, they all went to Chedi to see the infant, worshipping each one as he deserved. The king of Chedi gave his son to be placed upon the laps of each of those kings. Though the child was set up upon the laps of a thousand kings, one after the other, yet what Yasariri foretold did not come to pass. Hearing about all this in Dwarati, the mighty Yadava heroes Sankarjana and Kanardana also went to the capital of the Chedis to see their father's sister. The Chedi queen was a daughter of the Yadavas. When they had greeted everyone present according to his rank, and the king and queen too, and asked after their welfare, Rama and Krishna sat upon fine seats. After those heroes had been worshipped, the queen, with great joy, herself brought her child and set him in Damodara's Krishna's lap. As soon as the child was placed on his lap, his extra arrows fell off and the third eye in his brow disappeared. When the king, queen saw this, she anxiously begged Krishna for a boon. She cried, Krishna, fears afflict me, and I want a boon from you. You reassure all who are afraid, you dispel their fears. Krishna, scion of the Yadava, said, Revered one, fear not, you know, Dharma and you need have no fear of me. What wound shall I give you? What shall I do, Matuli? Oh, my aunts, I will do what you ask. Why? Whether I can or not. The Queen Zerutakirti said, Mighty, mighty Krishna, for my sake you must pardon every offense of my child Sisupala. Oh, Yadup Yagra, oh Lord, this is the boon I ask of you. Krishna said, Aunts, even when he deserves to be killed, I will pardon a hundred offenses of his, so do not grieve. Bhishma continues, It is thus, O Bhima, that this wretch king, this evil-hearted Sisupala, haughty with the wound which Krishna granted his mother, dare summon you to battle. He is immortal, basically. He is... It means that basically he's one of those uh, guys who is immortal because only if this particular condition is met, then it is that he's going to die. I, I guess, like uh, Bhima himself also. B no, sorry, Bhishma. Bhishma is also somebody of that condition. Only if he decides to die, it is that he can finally find Swarga. So yeah, I, I, I guess kind of weird, I will guess. <coughs> Canto 43. Sisupala Vadha Parva continued. Bhishma says, The will which moves the Lord of Jedi to call you to fight, though he knows how strong you are, of a strength which knows no exertion, that will is not his own, but surely the purpose of Krishna himself. O oh, Shaganatha, O oh, Bhima, which king on earth will dare abuse me as this wretch of his race, already in this clasp as dawn today? There is no doubt that this mighty armed one is an Amsa of Haris Tejas, and I am certain that the Lord wants to take back unto himself that energy of his. That is why, O of Yagra, this tiger-like Chedi king, so while his heart roars as he does, caring nothing for all of us. The Chedi king hears what Vishma says and can bear no more. In fury he responds, May your enemies, O Vishma, be endowed with whatever prowess this Kesava has, whom you praise like a heim, chander, rising repeatedly from your seat. If Vishma, you find such delight in giving praise, then praise these kings, not Krishna, praise this Dadara, most excellent ruler of Balhika who rent his very earth as soon as he was born. Praise, O Bhishma, this Kama, king of Anga and Banga, who is equal in strength to him of a thousand eyes, who draws a great bow, this mighty armed one who wears celestial kundalas with which he was born, and this coat of mail is splendid as the rising sun, who vanquished Harasanha, Basava's equal at resting, almost mangling that king. Bhishma, praise Drona and Aswadhama, Father and son, mighty warriors, worthy of praise and the best of Brahmanas, either of whom, I am certain, if anger could destroy this earth with all its mobile and unmoving beings, I do not see any Kshatriya 
who's the equal in battle of Drona or Aswatthama. Why don't you want to praise them? You pass over to the Othana, most mighty arm king, unequal in this whole seared world, and King Hedrata, master of weapons, blessed with great prowess, and Druma, guru of the Kimpurushas, renowned for his untold might, and old Kripa, a charger of the Baharata princes, also endowed with vast prowess. You ignore all this and praise Krishna? You pass over that best of bowmen, Rukmin of blazing energy, and praise Kesava? You ignore Bishmaka of prodigious might and King Dantavakra, and Bagadatta famed for his numberless sacrificial stakes, and Hayatsena, King of the Magadha, and Virata and Rupada, and Sakunia and Brihadvala, and Binda, and Anubinda of Avanti, Pandya Sueta Utama, and Sanka of Great Prosperity, the proud Brishasena, the powerful Ekalavia, and the great warrior Kalinga of abundant energy, and praise just Krishna and Bhishma. If your mind is always inclined to sing the praises of others, why do you not praise Salia and the other kings of the earth? What can I do when it seems that you have not heard anything before from virtuous old men about teaching Dharma? Have you never heard that both uh, reproach and glorification of either oneself or others are not practiced by honorable men? There is no one who approves of what you do when you ceaselessly praise with such adoration and out of sheer ignorance this Krishna so unworthy of praise. How do you, from your mere wish, establish the entire universe in the servant of the Bohas, this cowherd? Oh, Baharata, this is not your true nature as a man, but more like that of the Bulinga beard, of whom I already spoke. On the far side of Imavat, there lives a beard called Bulinga, who never utters a word of evil import. Never do anything rash. This is what she always cries, but never understanding that she herself always acts rashly. Having little intelligence, these beards pecks out the shreds of meat, sticking between the lion's teeth, and at that, always while the lion is eating, assuredly, that beer lives at the lion's pleasure. Oh, wretched Bishma, oh sinner, you always speak like that beard, just as surely as you are alive, only at the pleasure of these kings. Yet there is no one like you to serve the worst interest of these same kings. Hearing these harsh words from the king of Jedi, O oh, Rahan, Bima says to him, Truly, I am alive at the pleasure of these lords of the earth, but I do not consider these kings as being even equal to a straw. No sooner does Bishma say this than the kings become inflamed. The hairs on the bodies of some stand on end, and some begin to reproach Bishma. Some who wield large bows cry, The wretched Bhishma is all, but he is boastful and does not deserve our forgiveness. Kings, mad with anger as this patriarch is, it is just that we kill him like an animal. Let us together bar him in a fire of grass or a straw. Bhishma hears this, and the Guru Granth Sahir, great his intelligence, says to those lords of the world, I see no end to our talk. For words can always be answered with more words. So, O oh Lord of the Earth, listen to what I have to say, all of you. Whether you kill me like an animal or burn me in fire of grass or straw, I set my foot on all your heads. Here is Krishna, Govinda, who knows no decay. We have worshipped him with the fierce Darkia. Let him who wishes for a sweet tale call the Dark Madhava, the Chaka Brerer the Gadadhari to a fight, and dying at his hands, enter into and become one with the being of this Devadeva, this god of gods. That's fucking god. We're, we're, we're finally reaching war, we're, we're on the willing point of this. This is, this is, this is, this is the conclusion of fucking 20 cantos where nothing of real importance happened. Let's fucking go! Canto 44. Sisupala Badha Parva continued. Balsampayana said, Hearing these words of Bhishma, the Jedi king, endowed with great prowess, says to Krishna, Who? Ah, okay. 
<coughs> Hanardana, I challenge you. Come fight me and I will kill you and all these Pandavas too. For, O oh Krishna, the sons of Pandu have dishonored all these kings by worshipping you who are no king. But they also deserve to die. Yes, I am convinced that these who have adored you, who are a slave, a rich and non king, surely deserve death at my hands. Saying this, the tiger among kings stands there, roaring in anger. After Sisupala has stopped ranting, Krishna speaks in the mildest voice to all the assembled kings and the Pandavas. O oh, kings, this evil one is the son of a daughter of the Satwatas, yet he is a terrible enemy to all of us Satwatas. Also, we never seek to hurt him. He always seeks our ill. When this ruthless fellow heard that we had gone to Pragyotishapura, though he is my father's sister's son, this villain came and barred the Waraka. While King Boha sported uh, us upon the Raibataka hill, this vile Chedhi attacked the attendants of that king, slew many, and led many others away to his to his city in chains. His every motive sinful, this wretch stole my father's sacrificial horse, which had been loose across the lands with an armed guard, so that he could obstruct my father's yagna. This sinner ravished the wife of the pure Agrura, while she was on her way from Dovaraka to the Sauvira country. This injurer of his uncle disguised himself as the king of the Karusha and ravished the chaste Badra, princess of Bisala, whom Karusha was meant to marry. Patiently have I borne all these sorrows for the sake of my father's sister. It is fortunate that today this has happened before all of you kings. You have all seen the hatred and enmity this Isupala bears me. You also know everything that he has done to me behind my back. For the arrogance he has shown me in the presence of you lords of the earth, he deserves to be killed by me. And today I find myself ill, able to forgive him. Wishing for a swift death, this fool dared desire Rukmini for himself. But like a Sudra failing to hear the Vedas being recited, he did not get here. Listening to Krishna, all the Gatar kings begin to reprove the king of Chedi. But the mighty Sisupala loves a lot and say, Krishna, you are not ashamed to say in this Sabha, especially before all these kings, that I desire your wife Rukmini? Madhusudana, who other than you, calling himself a man, will declare in the midst of honorable men that his wife was intended for someone else? Krishna, pardon me if you please, or do not, but angry or friendly, what can you do to me anyway? When Sisupala says this, Krishna thinks of the chakra which humbles the havaris of the Asuras. As soon as the discus appears in his hands, the eloquent and illustrious one says loudly, Lords of the earth, hear why I have always forgiven this Isupala in the past. It is because of the boon I gave his mother that I will pardon a hundred offenses of his. This was the boon she asked me for, and this was the boon I granted her. But today, O oh kings, that number has become full. And now, in your presence, I will kill him. With that, and a growl, the lord of the Yadus slough off Sisupala's head with the chakra, and the mighty armed king of Chedi falls like a cliff struck by thunder. Rahan, the gutter kings, see a fierce light, pulsing, bright as the thunder in the sky, issue from the body of Sisupala. The spirit light worships Krishna of the lotus leaf eyes, whom all the worlds worship, and melts into the Lord's body. The kings are wonderstruck to see that light entering Krishna Purushottama. When Krishna kills the Chedi king, the cloudless back and sky pours down showers of rain. The peals of thunder echo. The air herself trembles. Some kings never say a word during those dreadful moments, but merely sit gazing at Hanardana. Others rub their palms in fury with their forefingers, yet others are beside themselves with rage and bite their lips, while some, in their hearts, approve entirely of what Krishna does. Some are there who are moved by anger, while others turn pacifiers. The great rishis are profoundly pleased. They praise Krishna warmly before departing. 
Indeed, all the high soul Brahmanas and many of the mighty Kshatriyas, too, who are there, are overjoyed to witness the prowess of the Vrishni. They eulogize him. Yet Kistira now commands his brother to perform the funeral rites for Sisupala, bold son of Damakosha, without delay and with proper honor. The son of Pandu obeys the behest of their brother. And then Yudhishthira, along with all the other kings, makes Isupala's son king of the Chedis. Then, O Rahan, the young of the Guru king of Great Dehas, Yudhishthira, blessed with every kind of prosperity, becomes exceptionally beautiful and pleases all the young men there. Even especially, every obstacle removed, replete with an abundance of wealth and corn, with rice and every other kind of food, Kesava watches over the sacrifice. In due course, Yudhishthira completes the yagna, while Hanardana Mahabaho, the lofty sori, guards it until the end, armed with his bow, the saringa, his chakra, and gada. When the good Yudhishthira has had his ritual but after the sacrifice, all the Shakriyas come to him and say, Through good fortune you have gained imperial dignity, O you of the race of Ahamida, you have spread the fame of your entire race, king of kings. You have gained profound religious merit but why you have done. You have worshipped us all to our heart's content, and we now say to you that we wish to return to our own kingdoms. It becomes you to give us leave. The Shastrithistira hears what the king say, worships each one as he deserves, then commands his brothers. All these kings came to us at their pleasure. These Parantapas now wish to return to their own kingdoms and to bid me farewell. Be blessed, my brothers, escort them to the frontiers of our kingdom. Listening to their brother, the other Pandavas follow the kings, one after the other, as each deserves. Without delay, the powerful Dhiratris Dristat Yumna escorts King Virata. Dananjaya follows the illustrious Maharata Yagnasena. The mighty Vimasena goes with Bhishma and Dharatirastra. Sahadeva, master of battle, follows the brave Drona and his son. Nakula, O King, follows Subala and his son. The sons of Draupadi, along with the sons of Subhadra, follow the mighty warriors kings of the mountain countries. Other Kshatriya Rishabhas escort other Kshatriyas, while the Brahmanas in their thousands also depart, duly worships. When all the Kshatriyas and Brahmanas have left, Krishna says to Yudhishthira, O oh, son of the Gurus, with your leave, I, too, wish to return to Dwaraka. Through great fortune, you have performed the greatest of all sacrifices, the Rahasuya Yagna. Yudhishthira replies, By your grace, Govinda, I have accomplished this, because of your grace alone all the world of Kshatriyas is now under my sway, and all the kings came here with tributes. Lord, without you my heart never feels any joy, so how can I, O Anagha, give you leave to go? Yet, I know that you must go home to Dwabaraka. The great Hari, his fame worldwide, now goes with his cousin to Aon's Kunti and says cheerfully, Matuli. Your sons have performed the Rahasuya Yagna and gained imperial dignity, but well they have obtained, and their endeavors have all been crowned with success. Be pleased with all of this, and now, with your leave, I wish to return to Dwaraka. After this, Krishna bids farewell to Draupadi and Subhadra, coming out of the inner apartments accompanied by Yudhishthira. He performs his ablutions and goes through the daily rites of worship and then has the Brahmanas utter their blessings. Now, the mighty Arn Daruka arrives in a chariot of wondrous design, its body like clothes, Krishna Mahatman, his eyes like lotus leaves, looks at that Garuda Banner chariot, walks around it in a reverent paradakshina before climbing into it and setting out for Dwaraka. Yudhishthira Dharmaraja Blessed with prosperity, along with his brothers, follows the mighty Krishna on foot. Then Hari, of the eyes like lotus leaves, stops that best of ratas for a moment, and speaks to the son of Kunti, Kino, King of Kings. Cherish your subjects with indefatigable vigilance and patience, as the clouds are to all creatures, as the great tree of spreading box is to the beards. 
as he of a thousand eyes is to the mortals, you be the refuge and support of your king. With this, Krishna and his Dira take leave of each other and return to their respective homes, Rahan. After the Lord of the Satwatas has gone back to Dwarati, only King Duryodhana, with King Subala's son Sakuni, bulls among men, continue staying in that unearthly sabha. My man. Let me, let me drink some water first. I will get something like Krishna being, in a sense, the most powerful being, literally has no reason to ex exact his rage in a unnecessary manner. He can rather become one of the, mm, as he did basically, he can literally kill anybody with one move, as one would say. So, I guess it was incredible to see how much patient is. I don't know if God and Avatar of a God, uh, Avatar of a God, sorry, um, had, because I will guess 100 is, in some senses, a lot of pardons, but in some others, I don't really know how many there are. I will, one of the few questions that I have is, is this a uh, 100 in the most literal sense, like, you will start to count since, um, this guy who was killed already was talking and you're going to find the, all the 100 things that happened there on the Mahabharata, also counting those that um, Krishna reveals afterwards, or you rather have to read more. And that seems interesting to me. But <clears throat> aside from that, the rest is incredible, I would say. To, um, it takes more more space than anything else. The, this particular encounter and this whole um, problem that was created, but the, the rest of the story and the um, conclusion of the whole rights, Sarpayua Yagna, was still incredibly fine. I, I will say, as yeah, I mean it went fine, so you cannot complain about it. Nor you can say that. It could have been better, I would guess. So yeah, I guess we might as well simply continue so far. Um, Canto 45, Dyuta Parva, by Sampayana said, When the greatest of sacrifices, the Rahasuya, so difficult of accomplishment, was completed, Vyasa, surrounded by his dis disciples, presents himself before Yudhishthira. Upon him, him Yudhishthira rises quickly from his throne, and surrounded by his brothers, worships his grandfather, the Rishi, with water to wash his feet and offers him a fine place to sit. Having sat on a costly carpet inlaid with gold, the illustrious one says to Yudhishthira Dharmaraja, sit yourself down. When the king and his brothers sit, the illumined Vyasa, always truthfully in speech, says, son of Kunti, your fortune swells and you wear it. You have gained empire, so difficult to acquire. And, O oh, father of the race of Kuru, the Kauravas have all prospered because of you, O oh, Chakra Bartin. I have been duly worshipped, and with your leave I now wish to go. Yudhishthira salutes the dark Rishi, his grandfather, touches his feet and says, Greatest of men, a doubt has arisen in my mind, hard to dispel, O bull among the regenerate, none but you can remove it. The illumined Narada says that, in consequence of the Rahasuyayagna, three kinds of omens, celestial, atmospheric, and terrestrial, occurred. Grand Sire, has the death of Sisupala caused evil fortune? The exalted son of Parasara, the island born Vyasa of Dark Hue, says, For thirteen years, O king, the summons will bear momentous consequences, ending in the absolute destruction, Rajadhiracha, of all Satriya kind. At that time, with you as sole cause, O Bahadre Shabha, 
All the Kshatriyas of the earth shall be annihilated because of the sins of Duryodhana and through the prowess of Bhima and Arjuna. Towards the end of these nights, in your dream you will see the blue-throated Baba, annihilator of Tripura, always absorbed in Dhyana, the bull his emblem, drinking from a human skull, and fierce and terrible, Lord of all creature, creatures, God of gods, Umapati, Kaldehara and Sarva also, and Brishna, armed with the trident and the bow Pinaka, and wearing tiger skin. You will see Siva, tall and white as the Kailasa cliff, seated upon his bull, gazing unwinkingly towards the sword, the direction presided over by the king of the Peters, king of kings. This shall be your dream tonight. Do not grieve for dreaming such a dream, for no one can escape time. But be you blessed, I now will go towards Kailasa. You must rule the earth with vigilance and steadfastness, patiently bearing every privation. Saying this, the illustrious Krishna Dvaipayana, accompanied by his disciples, who always follows the dictates of the Veda, goes away towards Kailasa. When his grandfather has gone, the king is greeted by anxiety and grief and thinks ceaselessly of what the sage said. He tells himself, Surely, what a issue for soul must come to pass? Who can keep faith at bay by effort alone? Then Yudhishthira, endowed with great energy, says to his brothers, Tigers among men, you have heard what the Bayana said to me. Having heard him, I have resolved that I must die, since I alone, otherwise, am ordained to be the cause of the death of all Shatriya kind. Ah, my precious brothers, if this is what time has in store for me, what need is there for me to live? Hearing the king, Arjuna replies, Rahan, do not yield to this manic dejection which destroys reason. Summon your courage and do what will truly be good for us all. His Hishtira, resolute in thought, thinking all the while of what Vyasamuni said, replies to his brothers, Be blessed and listen to the vow I swear from this day. For thirteen years, whatever be the purpose for which I must live, I will never speak a harsh word to you, my brothers, or to any king of the earth. Commanded by my kinsmen, I will observe Dharma and exemplify my brothers. If I live thus, making no distinction between my own children and others, there cannot be any disagreement between me and anyone. Disputation causes war in this world. If I keep war at bay, I always doing what is agreeable to everyone. If a mission never be mine, O oh, Purushari Shabhas. The other Pandavas listen to what their brother says, and the being ever engaged in doing his will, they approve, having sworn this oath. His Hishtira Dharmaraja, together with his brothers, gratify his priest as also the gods with due ceremonies in that Sabha. Bahadur Shabha, when all the kings have won, Yudhishthira performs the customary rituals and then returns to his palace with his ministers. King of men, Duryodhana and Sakuni, son of Subala, continue to stay in the Maya Sabha of fascination. Um, yeah, I, I need to read the, the revelation once again. That, that was the only thing that so far I think I haven't understood. I have had problems properly observing um, some representations like a, I cannot uh, visualize what what is a embodied mountain or things like that. I cannot visualize that. But in, in this particular revelation, I can't even understand what is it that they are talking about. Um, uh, I mean, we might as well, if there is no problem, read this a little bit once again. Oh, how long it is? Okay. For 13 years, O oh King, those moments will be momentous consequences, ending in the absolute destruction, Rahat Hirasha, of all Kshatriya kind. Momentous consequences. What is a momentous consequence? Something instantaneous? Momentous? I, I, I guess I can understand it in the sense of literally every Kshatriya will be killed, I guess. I don't know. At that time, with you, a soul cause, 
O Bajaratari Shabha, Altis e Tries of the Earth, shall be annihilated. They are all going to. Uh, obviously, that, that is understandable. They are all going to die. Because of the sins of Duryodhana and through the prowess of Bhima and Arjuna. Duryodhana was the. Duryodhana was the evil uncle, I think it was. That, that might be a reason as to why it might happen, I, I guess, I don't know. Um, ah, I mean, okay, I can understand that part. This is what I really can't make any sense in particular. Towards the end of this night, in your dream you will see the blue-throated Baba, annihilator of Tripura, always absorbed in Diana, the bull his emblem, drinking from a human skull, and fierce and terrible, lord of all creatures. God of Oz, Umapati, also called Hara and Sarva, also, and Brishna, armed with the trident and the bow, Pinaka, and wearing tiger skin. What? What? Yeah. I, you will see Siva, tall and white as the Kailasa cliff, seated upon his bull, gazing unwinkingly towards the south, the direction presided over by the king of the Peters. King of kings, this shall be your dream tonight. Do not grieve for dreaming such a dream, for no one can escape time. I will try to make... Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't understand what is the context of momentous. Uh, it says momentous consequences, yes. But... I think the, the easiest response will be probably all these different gods, as always, as we, as it happens with almost every kind of um, without destroying it so much. Mm, momentous. What? Momentous means means great significance. What? <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Clan Dyke. What? <laughs> what? I wouldn't have guessed that. Uh, thank you. What? Momentous. LMO. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, 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 okay. It, it makes a little bit more sense then. I, I guess, I guess. Mm. And I mean, in a. Um, yeah, yeah. It is completely unintuitive. As it contains basically. I mean, momentous, at least if you were to say it. Um, momentaneo in Spanish doesn't really mean um, something of big significance. It rather means something more closer to the definition of momentarily. That is why seeing momentous, I thought it was more related to that, I, I guess. But well, um, I mean, it is completely understandable then that it says momentous. Obviously, because of what you did. Every single one of the race of the Shatrias is going to be killed. So, so yeah, uh, great significance. Yeah, yeah, very, very great significance. But Baba, I don't remember who is Baba. That is one of the few problems that I have. Um, I guess, yeah. What I will, I will say probably trying to finish this is. The different gods that are observed here represent the different ways in which things are, are going to happen, probably. As it is a common thing in almost all these epic stories that they use the usage of different entities for the sake of explaining, I wouldn't say paranormal activities, but rather unnatural activities, um, yeah. things outside of the realm of the human capacities, that type of activities. Mm, end up being represented through the different gods. So I will guess, basically, that's um, if I had to guess something like this is simply one of the few representations of wh what was it called? The um, what is seen in, in a the more Western culture 
uh, the what what was it? Those of the omens of death, the carriers of death. What what was it? Their name? The four chariots. The omens. I, who is it that I can remember that word? Anyways, those uh, four guys: famine, death, plague, and what was it? Destruction. I think. Oh, no war. Famine, war, um, hunger, and death. Those were uh, things sim similarly applied to here, I will guess. So yeah, I try to, try to apply that into here, I guess. It means that it is going to be the worst part that we are going to see. Uh, yeah, yeah, horsemen, horsemen. The, yeah, yeah, the four horsemen of uh, destruction. Um, I mean, they are also the harboringers. So yeah, whatever it is. Uh, thank you, thank you, Clint Lake. I guess I am a little bit clanky with words today, but well, I mean, in a sense, it is going to be interesting to see so much destruction as one of the few things that, it, that the Mahabharata does incredibly fine is to portray out of that complete and utter, I wouldn't say negativity, rather um, gross scenes, grotesque scenes, so yeah. I, I will <laughs> probably the imagery is is going to be kind of weird. <laughs> Let's say like that. Uh, yeah. And also, thank you, Klondike. <laughs> we, we simply try to to stay properly into the non-existing text that is created for the sake of explaining stuff. So yeah, thank you, thank you. But well. Uh, let me let me see. How much more is this particular uh, parva? Mm, or how much? Ah, no, forty-seven. I think at this point I am really curious. Um, three more. How, how many more there are? Uh, give, give me a second. Uh, in this case, I am really curious. I I thought it was going to be shorter or something like that. I, I guess. What the fuck? No, it, it isn't uh, even close to being short. I don't know. We're going to see, probably. So, anyways, um, we might as well simply continue with this. I think it was the 47, I guess. I will, I will go just in case to read. Um, uh, no, okay, yeah, 46 it was. Um, also, wait, how, how much I had when streaming? Huh? Let, also, such in case, let me, let me check that, thank you. I have already been streaming for a whole hour, what? Uh, uh, okay, at the very least I want to do the 46. Let, let me, let me finish with that. 46, Canto 46, Duta Parva continued. By Sampayana said, that bull among men, Duryodhana, continues to live in the Maya Sabha, with Sakuni, the Kuru prince slowly examines the entire edifice and sees many and unearthly designing it, which he has never seen in Hastinapura, the city named after the elephants. One day, while walking through the mansion, Raja Duryodhana comes upon a crystal surface, mistaking it for a pool of water. He draws up his clothes, only to find its solid floor. He continues in some shame and sorrow. Some time after, Mistaking a lake of crystalline water with a dawn ah, of crystalline water adorned with lotuses of crystal petals for solid ground, he, he falls into it with his clothes on, drawing peals of water from the mighty Bhima, as also from the servants of the palace. At his tira's command, the servants quickly bring Duryodhana fine fresh clothes. Yet, seeing Duryodhana like that, Bhima, Arjuna, and the twins all love out loud. Unused to being insulted, Duryodhana cannot bear that laughter. He hides his feelings and does not even look at them. Yet again, he draws up his clothes to cross some dry ground, which he once more mistakes for water, and again they all love. Soon, Duryodhana mistakes a solid crystal door for being open space, walks straight into it and stands stunned. His head, <laughs> his head really. Then he thinks an open door is shut and cautiously reaches out his hand to fill empty space and dripping falls down. 
coming to yet another door, which is a hard but thinking it close, he turns away from it. Finally, O King, having seen the staggering wealth of the Pandavas during the Rajasuya Yagna and having humiliated himself repeatedly inside the Maya Sabha, Duryodhana takes his leave of the Pandavas and returns to Hastinapura. Dwelling darkly in his mind on everything that he has seen, which has made him burn with envy, and all that has happened to shame him, his heart turns to dire thoughts of sin, even while riding home. He has seen the Pandavas full of joy, with all the kings of the earth paying them homage. He has seen young and old serving the sons of Pandu. He has seen the splendor and prosperity of his illustrious cousins, and Suryodhana, son of Taharatirashtra, is pale with jealousy. While riding home, his heart sorely affected, Duryodhana thinks of little other than the grand Sabha and the unmatched prosperity of the wise Yudhisthira. The Haradirastra is so absorbed by these thoughts that he says not a word to Subala's son, even while Sakuni repeatedly addresses him. Seeing him plunge in this action, Sakuni asks, Duryodhana, what affects you like this? Yudhvyodhana replies, Uncle, Seeing all the world under the sway of Yudhisthira, from the power of the weapons of the mighty Arjuna, seeing the glory of the Yagna of Freda's son being equal to that of the sacrifice of Sakra himself, I am filled with flaming envy, burning me night and day, drying me up like a shallow tank in summer. When Sisupala was killed by the lord of the Satwatas, there was no man to take the side of Sisupala. Consumed by the fire of the Pandava, they all forgave that crime. Else, who could ever condone such a thing? Because of the power of the son of Pantu, Krishna got away with his heinous offense, and so many kings brought myriad and untold wealth for Kunti's son, even like tribute paying Baisyas. Seeing with his dearest fortune, his resplendent prosperity, my heart burns with envy, although this does not become me. Truly, as if flames burn him, Duryodhana says again to the Ganhara king, I will cast myself into a fire. Follow poison or drown myself. I cannot live. Which man of vigor in the world can bear to see his enemies prosper while he himself is destitute? I who watch my enemy prosper am neither a woman, nor yet, nor yet not a woman. Neither I am a man, nor one who is not a man. Think the Pandava sovereignty over the earth, their vast affluence. Ah, watching the Rahasuya Yagna of theirs who is there in the world who will not be arrived. By myself, I can never hope to gain such empire or wealth, and I see no allies who will help me acquire them. This is why I think of killing myself. I see the unparalleled and serene prosperity of Kunti's son, and I know that fate is supreme and all effort pointless. Son of Subala, once I strove ceaselessly to effect his death, but he baffled all my attempts and looks at me, Looks at him now bloomed fully like a lotus from a pool of water. Surely, fate is supreme and effort in vain. Behold, day by day, the sons of the Haradirashtra decay, and the sons of Prita wax. Ah, my heart burns as if, it, as if it were on fire to look at the fortune of the Pandavas, that software of theirs, to think of their servants laughing at me. Oh, uncle, know that I am grief stricken and fit to burst with envy. And I will speak it and speak of it to the Haradirastra. I guess one of the few explanations that I can somehow come up with is probably Yudhistira. No, what? Duryodhana. Yudhistira. Duryodhana is so unlearned about how the world works that he believes. Everybody was, as it happens in general, almost drawing a parallel with what is common with those who can't talk about what they are going through. They think everyone is making fun, fun of them every single time, when in reality, most of the time, what happens is one tends to love for the act of not being so aggressive and not mm, making the situation worse. Therefore. I would guess even in a conciliatory manner, as it was shown that all of the Pandavas do, they decided to try and help Duryodhana, and he 
by being considered observe that as a sign of um, lobster and even more of I, I wouldn't say bullying what, what is the other word of belittling towards him so I, I, I guess it, it is kind of sad to see it but I guess also it is it is an all. in a sense if one in that sense, what can be probably extracted is if one is truly incapable of understanding how much mm, we have under our own control, mm, one will truly believe that everyone is trying to go against him. In a sense, almost, uh, it seems he's more dealing with shame in some way. Yeah, I, I will guess also, I will guess. Um, as he sadly, I mean, the, the shame of also seeing that your in this case what is it your uncle sisters brothers, uh, your relatives are doing incredibly more better or infinitely more better than you to the degree to which well both of you are king one is literally now the king of the whole world and you are still the king of nothing almost by seeing that you have to be strong-minded to not get affected by such levels of envy and to not get affected by such levels of shame because in a sense you literally failed to do your your purpose in a sense it isn't that you really failed but rather that probably you need to be capable of properly not seeing it so negatively so yeah i mean interesting to see it and i guess the lesson is to be constantly in check with one with what one has to avoid this kind of thing as this is taken to the most extreme case it will literally bring the destruction of a whole race so maybe maybe interesting interesting to see it i would say uh, i won't i won't draw any particular parallel but taking it from that point of view you can even try to apply that into for example um let's not say any particular name because i am i don't know if it is okay to say it or not even if the context is appropriate uh, that particular sh german man who had um, uh, a particular mustache that particular guy something like that you know so uh, maybe maybe being so ashamed and so angry at the world is not the, not the best thing we have not only we, we do not only have an example of an story we have an example of that in real life you know Ma, man <laughs> but yeah i guess also as you say he cares too much about comparing himself to others I, I guess a poor guy like him really can't avoid such type of thing but yeah i don't know i don't know crazy crazy Let, let's say simply that crazy so far but well i think with that we can properly say that we uh, at least for now we're done we are going to um, take a tiny leap I forgot to do it earlier, so uh, let me let me let's, give me a second. Let me, let me let me retrieve a particular link that I have somewhere. Is this the one that I want? This should be the one that I want, no? Is it? Yeah, amazing shilling moment where I show you a link about something. In this case, um, something that is going to happen tonight. So yeah. So far, we can simply conclude that this beautiful stream is reaching an end. This beautiful thing is getting to a closer, let's say. And well, I mean, probably tonight we are going to take it more chill. We are not going to be so, <laughs> so directly focused on reading this. But anyways, whenever it happens, we are going to continue this, man. What a beautiful book it is. I guess the, the things that you can learn are incredible. So yeah, very, very, very nice as always. And well, um, now I guess what is truly necessary is try and write someone. So um, let me try to do that. Well, I mean, yeah, let's not say anything for the sake of uh, not spoiling the mood. But yeah. Um, as always, very nice to be here, very nice to enjoy this, to enjoy the, the beautiful gift that is to analyze content, to go over it, to read some more, to find le lections over, um, over these kind of things. Because you will even not 
believe that it it is capable of happening but rather you at least in my case i really get amazed sometimes at the things that are contained behind something that shouldn't be that um, interesting I, I will simply argument it so yeah as always beautiful 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 yeah requires nutrients yeah yeah as, as always also yes we need to take a tiny break so that we can properly <laughs> keep growing the the beautiful the beautiful path of endless learning so yeah so far it was very nice as always thanks for being here thanks for staying for overlooking for watching the world for every for every single part um i think i am this so far i will have no problem about doing it um but yeah let, let us try to I, I almost created a marker what the fuck the completely incorrect thing it was red my bro yeah there it is <laughs> i don't know why i almost made a marker i mean i guess my mind was there but yeah as i was trying to say thanks for for being here thanks for watching for lurking for enjoying this for um, Taking time out of your day to watch this, to partake in this, and to allow this to keep happening. In this case, mm, obviously, thanks to, to you, Klondike. Klondike, sorry. Hey, Klondike. Klondike. <laughs> thanks to you. Thanks also to Sukadri, to River Pekan. Um, wait, 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 wait. Do we have the bot working? Do I have to... Tell me. Oh my god, we have to do what working. This is quality content. This is the best ending that we can get. So yeah. People, thanks for everything. Remember to stay safe. Remember to stay nice. Rest there. And whenever it happens, it happens. We're going to get back. In the next occasion, it will be a, a chill collab. But whenever it is that you can find it, once again, it will happen. And if it doesn't happen, at the very least, we'll show you what we had here. So, as always, thanks for everything. Now, Raid, who blew is doing art. So, yeah, thanks for everything. Goodbye and thanks. Remember to stay safe. Now, raid.